Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to this talk. Um, last year, my team and myself, we developed an optical character recognition for handwriting. Our first option was to use TensorFlow and Python. Um, but I'm not going to talk about this project. Uh, maybe I'm going to, to, to tell you what options do you have if you want to build your next um, deep learning project using Go, if it is possible. I am Diana Ortega. I work, uh, I am a software developer at Xavier Frams. I'm also the co-organizer of the meetup Women Who Go Paris and Golan Paris. Today, I'm going to start talking a little bit about the project that inspired this talk. After that, I'm going to show you the machine learning solution we, we did. Then, I'm going to try to make the, main, the, the same solution using Go, and we are going to, uh, to see some takeaways and conclusions. Before starting, I just would like to know, who in this room is a data scientist? as I guessed. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be um, very technical in some machine learning concepts, but don't worry, I'm going to try to explain myself in the best way. Um, the idea of the project that inspired this uh, talk was we have some pictures, some images of some documents, completed documents by different users uh, by hand, completed by hand. We have to process these documents, uh, create an optical handwriting character recognition to take the, test, the text inside these images and to save them inside a normal database. Um, there are a lot of handwriting engines in, in the market, but we wanted, we wanted something more specific to our context. We had to detect, uh, detect uh, some immatriculation number, for example, we were working with cars. Uh, we needed to, to find some um, drivers, um, owners, uh, uh, car owners, sorry. And we wanted to take into account the features of the, sh of the sheet and the, and the features of the feeling of the users. If we had, if we have a, uh, a limited set of uh, font, it would be easy for me as a developer, easy, uh, to code some rules to try to find what is inside this image. If, if, I, if I have another variability, for example, the color of the sheet change, uh, I can write another rule to take into account that. But we, are, we, we were trying to work with handwriting, and there is a lot of variability. We have as many fonts as people in the world, and this it is a difficult problem. It, in this case, it's better if the computer could learn all the rules uh, from examples, and that's a machine learning problem, and that's how uh, we, sol we solve it. As it is machine learning, so is data science. Uh, to manage a data science project, we have a set of steps. First of all, we have to see how we have to select the data. We have to prepare the data, clean it. I mean, if we have Im images, we have, for example, uh, to to drop uh, the, to to drop the noise, the salt paper, and something like that. When we have a, a, a proper uh, a good data set, we can start to build a model. And when we have a model, we build us with something that we can deploy and use in a production environment. Well, uh, for testing uh, the concept we were trying to, to use, we used uh, a, data, a database, the IAM database, that is a database of, of handwriting. It's very useful because it's well annotated, I mean, uh, you have images with text, and you have the text, and you can be sure that the text you have uh, is the same that is in the, inside the image. And we have a limited variability. I mean, um, we have 
black ink over, over white background. From that, we start to, to build our machine learning solution. And the machine learning solution was that. Easy, no? Well, uh, at the time of uh, the project, uh, it was the state of the art. It's based on a paper of Deng and Kanner Visto. And, uh, well, if we take a closer look, maybe we could understand a little bit what is it about. Um, first of all, we have a convolutional neural network, CNN. It's like the eyes of my architecture. Uh, I, b before continue, I have to say something, is that when we are working with deep learning, uh, it has one advantage, is that uh, we can link neural networks. I mean, the, I have a neural network, and the output of this network can be the input of, a, on, of a, another neural network. Like that, we can build uh, more complex architectures. And why we want to build more complex architectures? Well, to, well, to, to create, to do cooler stuff. That's it. I say uh, the convolutional neural network, or CNN, is a, neuro, is a neural network that um, is like the eyes of this architecture. Uh, it is used in, uh, in um, classification tasks. Uh, so if we have the image, for example, in this image, it say forum, this network could, can say, ah, there is an F in your image. That's great, but I don't need to know that there is an F in the image. I need to know that there is the word forum. I need something else. Only the CNN is very useful when you are trying, for example, to, to classify image uh, to, say, to know if there, if there is a cat or a dog in, in the image. Well, we have to have something else to know there is a, a word forum. And the next network is an architecture called sec to sec It's a complex architecture also. Uh, and it is composed, uh, this architecture helped me to translate uh, a sequence, analyze a sequence, and transform it in another sequence. It is composed by an encoder and a decoder. Uh, the both are implemented using recurrent neural networks, or RNN. Uh, when we talk about sequence, we talk, for example, it is very useful, for example, for Trans, uh, translation engines or chatbots. In a translation engine, we have two sequences. The, the language of origin, for example, English. Uh, we want to translate the word hello. Uh, we have the language, the, the language destination is the sequence of destination, that is hola. That's it. Alors, we have uh, our architecture. We implemented, we implemented all of this stuff using TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a library for machine learning, and it uses a graph-based flow. It's very particular. Uh, we have to build it into a step. The first step, we build the graph. The graph is composed by nodes that are the operations, and tensors uh, in the axis that are the, like the data. And in the second time, we create a session, and we pass the real data, and we run this graph. It is maybe the most popular framework in the, in, in, in the market today. Uh, so we, we use all of this stuff. We create a, a soft, uh, little a small program in Python using TensorFlow with Dockerized. Uh, we train and we, we get our model. And we did the same uh, when we had the model. We used TensorFlow and Python to, uh, to deploy, uh, uh, to pass our prediction process. Well, that's very cool. But I am in the slide 14. This is a 30 minutes fall, a talk, sorry. And I have not mentioned Go. What about Go? Well, we have uh, some official bindings from TensorFlow. And in the official page, it states that the, it, this, has, this is some kind of warning. It says, this APIs are particularly well suited to loading models created in Python and execute them 
executing them within a Go application. It means once you have your model, you can pass an inference process to use, uh, and you can use Go with that. Well, that's it. We, we have uh, created our model. We create, so we create uh, our session in Go, and we, run, and we just run the model. Um, how, uh, how did I do that? Um, when I'm showing you code, in the right top corner, you are going to see the, the logo of the language we are, I, I'm using in the code. The first thing you have to do is to save your model in Python. How do you do that? Well, you freeze your, mod your model <coughs> and, <coughs> sorry, and you create a saved model builder. And when you do that, it automatically creates a folder with the name I state, in this case, OCR model. And then you use to save the, the graph. Once you have do that, it generates a .pv file and you can uh, load it using Go. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to load the saved model in the path. And after that, you can access the tensors you have created in the model. It is a very important th thing when you are creating your model in the training phase uh, to name your tensors and your operations. If you don't, you are, Python does it for you automatically. But it means that you are going to have very weird names like this one we have in the bottom. And you are going to get lost. You are not going to be able to, to load a in an easy way this, the, your model. And uh, yeah, you, you, I, I call the last operation that starts my, my, proce my process. And I run the model. I say uh, you have to name your, your tensors. But what if you don't do that? Well, you have some options. The first option is to create a Python code to, to explore your, your, your model. Um, you can wait for the Go solution. There is a, in GitHub, there is a, a, an issue uh, asking for that. If not, you can use TensorBoard. TensorBoard is an, a tool that comes with, with TensorFlow that can help you to monitor your process, your training process, your uh, inference process. Uh, you, it, it, you just, ha you just has, have to add some events, define some metrics, and it shows you all these things in a cool way. Uh, you can also explore your, your model. And here I am exploring my, my, my graph, and in the le left side, I can find the tensor's name. That's a way to, to explore that. Um, it's OK. I could execute my model. Um, but in the, in, during the process, I had some errors, like this one. Maybe it's not a very explicit error, but and, and very explicit error, sorry. But I think if you work with the framework, you can you, you get use of, of them. This error was when I, I didn't I, I didn't I am trying to to use a tensor that does not exist and you just say that. The other thing is that um, the response of my model was one code encode. Is a special encoding. Uh, I had to transform it, it by hand. Uh, there is not there is nothing in Go that could help me to do that. It's not difficult, but um, okay. Well, we have a, our software that uses some uses a model. We can start predicting. We can deploy, uh, dockerize our, our software and deploy it. Uh, we can create also pipelines. Uh, pipelines are good because uh, they can help us to execute um, all the process automatically. You can create uh, your pipeline uh, by hand, um, something even driving, or you can use uh, any tool like Pachyderm. 
uh, pachyderm uh, helps you create in the, the pipeline and also helps you uh, to version your data. Uh, Docker and pachyderm are written in Go. Uh, cool. Uh, what about monitoring? Well, you you just you just created a Go so far. You can monitor it as you usually do in in, in Go programs. Um, you can also monitor your GPU, your memory, your performance. But if you want to monitor anything more specific to your model, and you are used to do to do it with TensorBoard, but there is no support with Go. There is only support uh, with Python. Uh, the the events uh, for for monitoring are are just files in a folder in Protobuf. Uh, you can create your own files, but I don't know. Or you can use this uh, library, TFSUM, uh, um, that uh, makes, makes uh, do it for you, but I have not tested yet. Not bad. We could use uh, Go to read the model, and we integrated, integrated Go in our data science project. Bravo. I'm happy, but uh, what if I want to, to pass to 100% Go? I mean, I want to create the model in Go. What, what do I have to do? I know the official library of TensorFlow states that it's uh, not used to, 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 it's better that, create, that you create your model using Python and, and so on, but I want to try. I want to use this. Uh, I want to create my, my model. So we are going to create our model, try to create our model in, in Go. The first thing we have to do is to create the graph. We can create graphs using the Go bindings, um, but it's quite complicated. Um, there are some elements we are not used to. For example, the, the concept of session, the scope, they are not very intuitive for us. Uh, there is an example in the official TensorFlow page uh, site um, uh, we are going to analyze. Uh, the first thing they do is to create uh, a new scope. This is, this is the root of our graph. After that, we, create, we define our placeholder. A placeholder is a place. We where, where we are going to hold our tensors. It's, it's going to have data. Here we just define uh, like the uh, structure. Uh, and we are defining A like a matrix of two times two. And we are defining X uh, like a matrix of two times one. It's very important to, to create this placeholder in a different scope. Uh, Go, that, the, the full naming of Go is not very mm, good as is uh, the, the Python one, and you can have a conflict with the name. In this case, it, 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 this is the name it, 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 does, uh, it gives a, of each um, placeholder. Finally, uh, you define an operation to run, here we are going to, to, to execute a matrix multiplication. And then you can define a, your session to run, to run the graph. Cool, we have created a graph. We have initialized the session. Now we have to run the graph. How we do that? We create the tensor to assign the values uh, to, the, to the matrix. Here we are, the, the values assigned is there are in comments about the tensor. And we run the graph, and we get the results. Here we are assigning A to matrix and X to column. And that's it. Easy, no? Yeah, it's easy. Well, it's a tricky thing. If you remember, the first thing we have to do is to create a CNN. So we are trying to create our CNN using Tensor, this library. 
Uh, when you are creating a CNN, the first thing you have to do is a convolution, uh, a convolution operation. We have a convolution operation. And we have a sampling layer, okay? We, there is a lot of code in, in the middle. We, we do the same thing. It's not uh, important. And as we are going to train our model, we have to, determine, to, to, to look for a way to see if the thing we, we get is the same as the thing we, we, we want and how are they different. Uh, this that's, is why we use this operation. And we need something that we call an optimizer. But bad news. There is only one optimizer implemented in these uh, libraries. It's an stochastic dual co coordinate ascent that is a very, very basic optimizer. I don't like it. I prefer another, um, another one more. So what, 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 did we what do we learn? Did we learn? Um, creating a model in Go uh, using this library is okay for simple graphs. Uh, we don't have all the implemented algorithms we have in Python. Um, there is another library, TFGo, uh, that is easier, but we have the same problem. We don't have all the implemented algorithms that we have in Python. So if we have to develop something in Scratch, why not use a real native Go library? And we have a, a very good library in Go that is Gorgonia. Gorgonia is very similar to Tiano. Uh, for those who come, uh, come from Python environments, maybe you, you, you know it. Uh, it works with graph. It's very similar. Uh, the, 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 it works very similar as, as, as TensorFlow. Uh, it supports uh, the last five versions of Go. This is just to remember what we are, uh, where, what we are trying to implement. Uh, and just um, we like to state that it's a complex uh, architecture. And we are going to start with the CNN again. Um, we, are we are starting to implement the CNN in Gorgonia. The first thing we do is to create a graph, initialize a graph as we do in TensorFlow. We create the tensors. Uh, tensor, tensor is a multidimensional array. We could handle that with uh, a slice, with a Go slice, but it's complicated. It's better if we have uh, the, our own structure. Um, why not a tensor? And we, ha we have our other tensor. Um, I would like to compare how it's created uh, to, com to create a convolutional layer in Gorgonia and in TensorFlow with Python. We create a convolution, a, co a convolution layer is the same thing. We use an activation function, the same thing, and we make a pooling, a subsampling process. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, for uh, for my architect for my solution, I did the same three times. Uh, we found that this was an, an optimal for our case, and we create uh, our CNN. Cool, we have a CNN. I have to 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 create the optimizer by hand, but it was not very painful. It it was uh, already an example that did it. Okay. Creating a uh, the CNN was easy. What about uh, my sec to sec? Sec to sec, sorry. Um, the first thing we have to do is to create an RNN. Just to state, how did how how do I do that in in TensorFlow? Well, um, I lied. I didn't do an RNN. I used a bidirectional dynamic RNN. That is more complicated. I mean, when you, you are analyzing sequence, you analyze as you read normally. In this case, with the dynamic uh, bidirectional RNN, you are going to analyze the sequence to the future and to the past. So it's like you are going to learn to, 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 the, to your network to predict what you are going to say. Um, for doing that, we need two RNN. 
the first one that is going to, to read forward and the other one that is going to, to read backward, to analyze backward, sorry. We have to create a cell, an LSTM cell. Then I create an RNN. I do the same thing from forward and backward. And then I, I create my dynamic RNN. I would like to do something similar in Gorgonia. It's not possible. Um, there are some examples uh, for creating the LSTM, the RNN, but they are not optimized. Uh, sometimes they are very specific to the problem they are trying to solve. So you have to do it by yourself. But if you are going to do it by yourself, um, you say that there were no data scientists in this room, so only do it under the consent of a responsible data scientist. So I don't have my sec to sec in an easy way. Sorry. But everything is not lost. We can, uh, we can see, we can uh, uh, prepare our data using Go libraries. Well, is that the case? We have a GONUM, a data frame. Um, we had some of the annotations in uh, Excel file. And uh, uh, that uh, use the data frame is very convenient because it allows you to, to handle the data using the rows and the, and the columns. If you have used uh, slices, you know that uh, reading columns in a slice is, is quite by far, but it's, it's, not, it's not as intuitive as using a data frame. Uh, we got num, you can have vectors, you can have linear algebra, you can have statistics. In this example, um, I'm reading a column from a data frame and I'm doing a, a transpose operation. I mean, I'm transforming the column in a row. We have also Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are very useful to see your data, to analyze your data. And you can use it in Go. You can download, install your, your, the, the Go plugin for Jupyter. And you can use uh, almost anything you have in Go using Jupyter. You can also show images. Uh, you can use your plot. Uh, here I'm, I'm plotting some um, data. And I'm doing, for example, a linear regression using GONUM. You can mix things. Well, that's it. Um, there are a lot of good tools for data science. Uh, if, you are, if you want to know more, you can go to gopher.io. There are a lot of resources, there are a lot of tools. We have, for example, links to, to cool, cool stuff like machine box, like Pachyderm. Uh, we have algorithms, uh, developed algorithms. We have a lot of, of cool stuff that can help you in your data science project. Uh, we have the GONUM libraries, the data frame, the Jupyter notebook, uh, Gorgonia, Pachyder, everything. Uh, what can we conclude? Um, if you are using your existing TensorFlow models, and there are a lot, uh, you are good to go. You can use the official bindings uh, for TensorFlow, you can use TFGo, anything. Uh, if you want to develop from scratch, you can use Gorgonia and Gonum. But if you want to, to have something easy, it's better for you to use Python. Because with Python, you can, uh, you can pro, uh, have all the knowledge of the, of the data scientist community that is working on algorithms and, and things that can help you in, in your project. If you are creating an, another, another kind of model, a statistical model, for example, you can use um, Go libraries. Uh, they are still in development. Uh, if you are used to Python tooling, it can be difficult. Uh, for example, in, in some time I needed an, an ArcMax. It's a, it's a basic function. Uh, it's not difficult to implement. It's just a for, but I didn't have it. But it's cool because that means, yeah, that can be projects where you can, you, you can become 
easily contributors. If you want to contribute a cold stop, this is a good way to start. Um, if you are, uh, but there is a lot of uh, a huge community working on that. There are a lot of those uh, libraries are still changing and being improved, and things are getting better. I saw this tweet uh, some months ago. Those are charcoal activated vegan croissants. You see, they are black. And as it's labeled in the, and, and this is stated in this label, it tasted, it tastes better than it looks. Thank you. Sorry? What's an LSTM cell? An LSTM cell is um, some kind of cell that can help you to, 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 to keep the memory. I mean, it has some entries that, uh, it has some multiple kind of entries, uh, some in the, 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 of the layer in the, in generally if it's layers, some of the layer before and some of the use to the thing that is next to them. Is it a data structure or a function? Sorry? Is it a data structure or a function? Is, they are like functions, maybe. It's quite complex. Sorry, I, I, I didn't. <coughs> Yeah. particular about Python that makes it very good for machine learning, or is it just a coincidence that the tooling is so good in Python? No, it's, it's very, it started with Python, I mean, uh, it's, it's an easy language, and all the, a lot of data scientists start to, to develop those things using Python, so this grow up, and uh, you have, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a bull of uh, snow. Uh, you, you, there are a lot of uh, algorithms uh, already implemented and more people arrive and implement more algorithms and so on. Well, ah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I show it. It's a, CNN is a convolutional neural network, and RNN is a recurrent neural network. Okay, thank you. <laughs>